Hi, my name is Abby, and I'm here with some of my friends today. We all are affected with ichthyosis, which presents itself as dry, scaly skin. Ichthyosis affects all different ethnicities, genders, and age groups. It can appear by itself or as part of a syndrome, which is when it affects many body systems. Even two people with the same type of ichthyosis can have different symptoms and different severity of their symptoms. It is important to see a specialist to identify what type of ichthyosis you have so they can treat it properly. My friends and I will share our personal stories regarding three different types of ichthyosis. When I was born, I had a shiny layer around me like plastic wrap. This is a sign for some types of ichthyosis. The doctors describe this as a colloidian membrane. The tightness of this membrane caused my eyes and lips to turn outward, making it difficult for me to feed. In infants like myself, the colloidian membrane cracks and peels away, revealing the type of ichthyosis. I was diagnosed with lamellar ichthyosis, which causes my skin to peel and be a lot darker and thicker. Lamellar ichthyosis prevents me from being able to regulate my body temperature because I cannot sweat. The skin on the bottom of my feet builds up, which causes me to get very deep fissures that crack, bleed, and often hurt. I'm also more prone to infections, especially staph infections. Hi, my name is Ken. I'm 44 years old. I'm from southern New Jersey, and I have lamellar ichthyosis. There are many different types of ichthyosis. One type, ichthyosis vulgaris, can be relatively mild and is present in about one out of 250 individuals. The more severe types are rare. It is estimated that approximately 300 babies are born each year in the U.S. with a moderate to severe form of ichthyosis. Some populations show higher frequencies of ichthyosis. The harlequin type is the rarest type. The age when symptoms appear can vary. In most individuals, ichthyosis is present at birth or develops later in infancy, but later onset is possible. Sometimes symptoms improve with age, other times they may become worse. My name is Hunter, I'm 20 years old, and uh, I was born with harlequin ichthyosis, um, which is a genetic skin disorder, ichthy coming from fish scaled or fish skinned, harlequin referring to the um, shape and pattern of the scales themselves. and. Um, Life's good. And my name is Mark, I'm Hunter's dad. Unfortunately, there is no cure for ichthyosis, but as new research and technologies are developing, new treatments are also developing. Ichthyosis has many different types, many different presentations, but we all share one common experience. The skin itself is an important element to the human body. It's our barrier, our protection against the outside world. It helps to regulate our temperature and keep good things in and bad things out. Me and Miles have a rare a skin called confetti. It makes us very itchy and our, and our skin is very scaly. So be very careful when you scrub us. <laughs> We also have little white spots and I, mommy, she calls them stars. Portia and Miles have a very rare type of ichthyosis called confetti. There are patches of normal skin among the scaly skin. These patches appeared when they were very young. Their skin is red and can get very itchy. There can also be palmar plantar keratoderma. In confetti ichthyosis, unlike the other two types, can be inherited in an autosomal dominant manner. This means that only one copy of the affected gene is required for someone to have symptoms. Well, Hunter was born uh, prematurely at 35 weeks. Um, quite a startling experience. Um, Patty said, hey, my water broke. Well, I was a first time dad. I really didn't even understand what that meant. Um, but uh, rushed to the hospital and um, born uh, with clearly uh, a disorder present and uh, Hunter like other lamellar and harlequin ichthyosis kids born prematurely uh, most of them have a collodion membrane uh, Hunter did not she had very thick plaques with deep fissures and uh, her eyes were covered with uh, I later learned is called ectropion and the mouth was stretched open, which I understand is eclabian, I believe, and uh, it all stems from um, a recessive genetic disorder, if you will, is what harlequin and lamellar ichthyosis stems from, 
Patty and, and I both shared a recessive gene that created Hunter. Um, understanding that there was a 25% opportunity for another child to be born with the same issues, uh, we chose not to do that, uh, figuring that our plate was full. <laughs> Each of my parents carries one of the two mutated genes necessary to create harlequinic theosis. Neither of them presented symptoms because each of them only had one of the genes necessary. But when both of those genes come together, it results in the presentation that results in harlequinic theosis. My day-to-day -day routine, I get up in the morning um, at 6.15 every morning. I soak in the shower for probably about 20 of those minutes and let the water hit me. Um, I lubricate from head to toe with Aquaphor. I carry around a uh, generic prescription bottle filled with Aquaphor in my scrub pocket and I touch up depending on the time of the year. I go home at night, I do what everybody else does. I have dinner, I open my mail, I'll take another shower. In between I fit in a social life, um, which is very active. Um, and my, all my friends have a stash of Aquaphor at their houses for me. <laughs> Well, actually, the first moment when she was born that they realized there was something wrong. And they didn't know what. And probably the hardest part was she was born on a Sunday, and it was a Tuesday before someone came in and said, this is what your daughter has, and this is what's wrong with her. But during those days, we didn't know whether it was something that was fatal or if it was going to be horribly, horribly disfiguring or because basically when she was born, they put her under the heat lamps and her skin started peeling off. Probably at first you're just worried, hey, is she going to live? Uh, what does she have? And then after that, you just sort of, you start going through a, what, what I would call a step-by-step -step process where you're like, okay, what does she have? How do we treat it? What's the next step? And it's, it's just at the time, it was very, very hectic and very, okay, we see this doctor, we see that doctor, we see the next doctor. My name is Shauna. I am 26 years old and I have ichthyosis and confetti. I'm not really sure how old I was when I actually realized that I had a physical difference. I was really lucky. I grew up with a really supportive uh, family and kind of community of friends. Um, and I think they, they worked really hard to not treat me any different. One of the stories my mom tells me, I was probably three or four years old, we were out um, just shopping and happened to notice somebody looking at me. And uh, I looked at my mom and kind of grinned and I was like, oh yeah, they're probably just looking at me because they like my smile. But I knew, like, I think that was the first time that she, re that she realized and that I realized that I was a little bit different than everybody else. It didn't stunt your affect my, my growing up or anything like that in a negative light, so. I was lucky. When we first received Portia's diagnosis, right after she was, or soon after she was born, immediately Sean found first a foundation for ichthyosis and related skin types on the internet. That entire community was uh, a source of really just what we needed to do medically, and then following that, it was the you know uh, emotional support that we needed to make us feel like we just, we were not alone. And from there, that's been a superior resource um, and a source of support for us when we had Portia. But then when we had Miles, we knew what, what was going on when he was born. So we were prepared and were able to prepare everyone for his diagnosis. Ichthyosis is something that is very visible. So our, whatever we're struggling with, like people can physically see that but everybody struggles with something. We went to a first conference, a regional conference, and it was very comforting as a parent to meet people who were in their 50s and 60s and had lamellar ichthyosis like Abby and find out that they had gotten married, that they had children, that they had jobs, that they had had a happy, successful, productive life, and that they didn't let the ichthyosis bogged them down. That was really, I mean, that, that, was, that was good for me to know. And even something as simple as planning a vacation. You know, we, most people plan a vacation and don't give a second thought to climate, weather, but because Abby has a hard time with um, regulating her body temperature, 
we pick places that are cooler. We go to Boston, we go to San Francisco. We don't go to the beach. <laughs> it's, it's just too hard for her, those kinds of things. Um, so there is an adjustment. We go to Disney World in January. I say that's how I was born and when I first went in school, I thought I did not fit in, but when I got mostly used to it a little, um, I started to get more friends and more friends, and now I have a bunch of friends. 